Are you always wondering about the things around you? Do you always have the need to find out? Then, this is the show for you. Learn what makes things tick. Or how they simply came to be. Satisfy your curiosity. Welcome to another episode of Curious. Ball pen. It's probably that thing that wrote the book about a lot of things. Literally. We're talking about, of course, the ballpoint pen or ball pen. If you take a look back at history, you might notice that written records paved the way from transitioning from prehistoric to historic times. The start of written language officially made up the first historic texts. There are, of course, a few tools that made this possible. From early crude carving tools, sticks, brushes, to the more modern ones like quills, dipping pens, pencils, and then fountain pens. While the previously mentioned writing tools served their purpose, mankind sought more from pens with convenience and function in mind. Since the discovery of ink, people have been using various tools to write with it. While it was effective, there were still problems of portability and smudging. It used to be that you always had to carry a bottle or small jar of ink everywhere when you wanted to write. This was solved when the lead pencil was invented, but we all know that pencil writings could be erased. Then there was the fountain pen. This solved all of the initial problems. However, ink was prone to drying out or leaking because of its design. That's where the ballpoint pen comes in. The first ballpoint pen was conceived around 1888. As patented by John Lout, who initially designed a roller pen to use for marking leather. He would be followed in 1916 by a man named Van Vechten Reisberg, who created a similar roller ball design. However, both their designs never made it commercially. It wasn't until the 1940s when Joseph Laszlo and George Biro would create and commercially market the first ball pens, which would make its way to the U.S. in 1945. The first pens were actually quite expensive for the time, but in 1953, the French Baron Bick came up with a mass-produced and expensive design closer to the ball pens of today. How does a pen work? Ink is stored in a narrow disposable plastic tube reservoir. A tip with a small metallic rolling ball is attached to the bottom of this tube. When the tip is slid over a writing surface, the ball rolls and dispenses some ink to the surface. The ink used is a special type of ink that dries fast to avoid smudging. Midi. Do you like listening to hip hop, pop? How about EDM? Well, you might not know it yet, but most of the music that's produced uses MIDI. But what on earth is MIDI? Is it a genre or instrument? Actually, MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. MIDI is the technical standard that allows a hardware instrument controller such as a keyboard, to interface and connect with a computer. But what does MIDI sound like? Well, actually, MIDI is technically not a sound, but rather a computer language. Often, MIDI will contain instructions or codes that will tell the computer what to play. These will include the note's pitch and other signals such as vibrato, panning, cues, and tempos. 
the information that MIDI carries is then interpreted by the computer, which will play or rather create a sound based on that information. After all that, the MIDI data is sent and arranged into what is called a MIDI sequencer, which as the name suggests, arranges the MIDI instruction in a sequence. And when you get enough notes together, these make up the elements of a composition or a song. While it might sound new and high-tech, MIDI has in fact been in use as the standard for electronic and digital music production since the 1980s, which you'll observe as the time when electronic and synth-heavy music was on the rise with genres such as techno and new wave. MIDI was first proposed by Ikotaro Kakehashi from Roland and Tom Oberheim from Oberheim Electronics, both founders of renowned electronic instrument companies. The technology was then developed by engineers Dave Smith and Chetwood. Other electronic instrument companies like Korg, Kawai, and Moog adopted it as the standard which is still in use today. Here's how a typical MIDI setup works. A controller is the input device that is used to input MIDI data. This usually comes in the form of a musical keyboard or a button grid device. The MIDI data travels to a connection using cables, which connect to an interface, then to a computer or a sequencer. When a note is pressed in the controller, the data is interpreted by the computer, which then plays a sound based on it. Today, MIDI technology is still growing and evolving as newer and cheaper controllers and sequencers become available. It's highly probable that the music hits of today and beyond will be produced with the help of MIDI. YouTube It's that thing that you watch videos online with. No, not your computer. We're talking about YouTube. YouTube is a type of social media site where users can upload, share, and view videos. With that simple concept alone, YouTube has become one of the most popular sites in the recent decade. Let's take a look at the humble origins. YouTube was founded by three employees from PayPal, which was a site that managed payment systems. Their names were Chad Hurley, Steve Chen, and Jawed Karim. According to internet legend, Chen and Hurley initially had the idea for a video sharing site because they found it difficult to send and receive videos via conventional means such as email. YouTube.com was first registered during February 14, 2005, but it wasn't until April of the same year when the website would go public. During the following months, YouTube would grow and attract investors as site visits drastically increased. And after a little more than a year of operations, tech giant Google finally acquired YouTube for $1.65 billion in October of 2006. Here's how it works. YouTube allows anybody to upload and share videos. All it takes is one created account. Then you are ready to upload. What YouTube does is it takes your video and converts it to a standard format. During its initial years, YouTube utilized the FLV format to make the video slider for streaming. But today's videos enjoy a higher quality, thanks to the H.264 codec, which we commonly know as the MP4 format. Because of this, instead of sending videos via email, users can upload a video in YouTube and share that instead. Of course, YouTube has a fair share of codes and rules for uploaded content, which users should be aware of. 1. The video has to be original, or at least have proper permission from the owners of the video. And 2. Videos should not contain questionable and illegal content. Through the years, some YouTube users have been garnering their own followings and have become internet stars. Some of the most popular examples are PewDiePie, a video game player, Ryan Higa, a comedian, Smosh, a comedy duo, and of course, one of the most popular YouTube breakout stars, Justin Bieber. YouTube 
actually gives incentives for creators of popular videos by paying top viewed videos for every click or every watch. Today, YouTube remains as one of the most popular sites in the world. The Olympics It's that one time where all the world's top athletes come together to compete in the most popular sporting event in the world, the Olympic Games. What many don't know about the Olympic Games is that its origins are deeply rooted to ancient Greek mythology and lore. In fact, legend has it that the Olympics were actually started out as a festival for arts and sports in honor of the Greek god Zeus. This started in a town called Olympia at around 2000 BC. This event would go on as part of tradition that was observed by the Greeks every year. But when the Romans came, the Olympics were prohibited and was relegated as memory. This was until its revival when a French baron, Pierre de Coubertin, thought of bringing the Olympic Games back as a way to foster international relationships and understanding through sports. This marked the start of the modern Olympic Games, which was held in 1896 in Athens, Greece. And it goes without saying that the Olympics became an international success. The Olympics was then scheduled to be held every four years since then. This has only been delayed a couple of times, once during World War I and the other during World War II. In the following years, additional Olympic events have been added to the Olympics which showcased specific summer and winter sports. These then gave way for the creation of the Summer and Winter Olympics, respectively, which also occur every four years, although the Winter and Summer Olympics occur two years apart from each other. For the Olympics, sports and regulations have come and gone, but there are a few Olympic traditions that are never changed. They weren't necessarily there since the first Olympics, but these were the ones that are still observed today. The Olympic flag contains five rings representing the five continents Africa, America, Asia, Oceania, and Europe. And their colors blue, yellow, black, green, and red were chosen because they were used as colors from all the flags in the world. Another tradition is the torch which is held and paraded by athletes around the world while the fire kept burning. The same fire would be used to light the Olympic flame for the opening ceremony of the Games. And of course, the medals. The top three participants from their respective countries each get a medal, gold being first prize, silver second, and bronze for third. The medals are given out after each event. While the national anthem of the winning country plays in the background and all three flags from the winner's countries are displayed. Computer Mouse What's the thing that you use the most when you open your computer? It's of course, the mouse. For years, the mouse has become a ubiquitous device for computers. You can imagine how hard it is to use a computer for office work, art, or even games without your trusty mouse. Now let's talk about a computer mouse. Basically, it's an XY input controller. It lets you move in an XY plane and translate that movement into the computer screen, and with that, comes the countless applications of the mouse as an input device. The first mouse was actually invented in 1964 by Douglas Engelbart. The first mouse may seem crude by today's standards, but it was very innovative for the time. Engelbart's design relied on two metal wheels attached to a circuit board underneath a wooden enclosure. The next development for the mouse didn't come until 1972 from Bill English, who was an engineer and designer for the Xerox company. He designed the trackball or mechanical mouse. This is the older style of mouse design, used in computers from the early 70s to the late 90s. The mechanical mouse 
uses a small ball that rolls up against a set of small wheels or rollers. These rollers then determine the position and movement of the mouse on screen, as well as the rate of movement. The trackball mouse was first sold to consumers bundled alongside the Xerox Alto computer. The mouse then became a standard for computer input, along with a trusty keyboard. Then in around 1980, another development to mouse technology came. This type of mouse utilizes optical technology, where the track ball and rollers are replaced in favor of a small blinking LED light that is tracked by a small digital camera, which is then connected to a sensor to track movements. But it wouldn't be adopted as a viable and universal replacement to the trackball mouse. Well until around the late 90s, as the cost of the technology would have been too high to mass market at the time. Today, mouse use is still dominant and a host of new features such as higher sensitivity, wireless connectivity, and specialized buttons that are now becoming standards for a computer mouse. And while touchscreen technology is slowly becoming an alternative to the mouse, specialized tasks such as video and audio editing office work applications, and even playing first-person video games still favor the use of a mouse. Augmented Reality What is Augmented Reality? Well, it's literally an enhancement or augmentation on our view of reality. Using computers, cameras, and sensors, our view of reality is augmented by a new layer of information. Although seemingly very recent, augmented technology has been in use for a couple of decades now. The first types of augmented reality were actually used for military applications. Early augmented reality tech was heavily used in fighter jets in the form of a heads-up display. This allowed pilots to see a ton of information about altitude, speed, direction, and even targeting on a clear display. This allowed them to get that additional layer of information without taking away from their field of view while flying their fighter jets. Augmented reality applications have also been featured prominently in science fiction where augmented reality technology in the form of heads-up displays or interactive holograms are heavily used. What separates augmented reality from virtual reality is the degree in which reality perception is enhanced or altered. In virtual reality devices, users are blocked from reality to experience a substituted world. But in augmented reality devices, reality and another host of information coexists or is presented together. Think of the possibilities. It can be used for making games, making interactive advertisements, educational purposes, navigation, and so much more. In fact, some of these are being used and implemented right now. For a taste of augmented reality, look no further than your good old trusty smartphones or laptop. You'd be surprised at the augmented reality apps that's available right now. Right now, most of the apps are still in beta or aimed at the video game market. But there are a few standouts with real-life practical applications that can be used right now. Among them are navigation apps that can tell your location based on a photo, a sign translator app, and an app that identifies items and brands. The technology uses your device's built-in camera and a working internet connection. These then display useful information that is layered over live video feed coming in from your camera. But that's not all. Recent trends are pointing towards smart glasses that will overlay information in the real world over your very eyes. As the technology gets more streamlined and cost-efficient, expect to see more AR devices in the near future. Reggae, it's that unmistakable jam.
groovy bass lines and steady bouncy beats. It's the music called reggae. Reggae is a type of music that is heavily influenced by blues, R&B, Afro-Jamaican roots music, and ska. But it has definitely become a genre on its own with its unmistakable sound. The reggae movement started as an offshoot of folk Jamaican and ska music in the 1960s. The genre itself is deeply rooted in the Rastafari movement, which is a Jamaican religion that has folk Afro-Jamaican and Christian influences. Reggae is a slow and down-tempo type of music, very reminiscent of the Rastafari lifestyle. Local following would follow shortly, and in the early 70s to 80s, would become a celebrated genre of music worldwide. Arguably, the most popular reggae artist is Bob Marley, who came to prominence during the 1970s. Through his music, Marley have channeled not only reggae music, but also his political activism and his religious beliefs. Marley is also unofficially revered as one of the spokespersons for the reggae movement, well until his untimely death in 1981. While it's hard to define any musical style, reggae sound can be traced to some definitive characteristics. One of the most obvious, sound-wise, is the use of staccato chords. These are chords played at short bursts, which give a characteristic bouncy feel. This can be done using short presses on the keyboards, and it can also be done through a technique called skanking. Skanking is a guitar technique that involves heavily muted guitar strokes, which is actually played to accent on the upstroke. This style is heavily borrowed from another Jamaican music style called ska, but in reggae, the skank is played to a much slower pace. Another characteristic of reggae is the moving or walking bass line. The bass guitar plays a major role in reggae music, as it is where the whole band follows the groove. Reggae bass is typically scooped, meaning that the high frequencies of the instrument are usually cut to give it a round, almost rumbling tone that reggae is known for. Aside from the instrumentation, reggae has a unique style of lyrical delivery that of Jamaican patois or Jamaican slang and accent. Apart from its historical significance, reggae often employs themes that comment on social cultural happenings in Jamaica and the Rastafari movement. You've just seen another fun and informative episode from Curious. As always, if you have the questions, then we're here with the answers. Stay inquisitive and stay informed. Catch us again next time on Curious.